Hey, what's up, Good Life? Thanks for joining me for today's 128 moment. Today, I wanna to deal with one question. What is faith? Faith is a word that we like to use, but I think we struggle to define it. If you listen to many television preachers, faith is God's secret sauce. They say that faith is how we grab hold of that abundant life that Jesus was talking about. If, that if you and I can just conjure up enough faith in ourselves, then we're guaranteed to be, to be healthy and wealthy and wise. We'll snag that house and that car that we've always dreamed of. If we can just believe strongly enough and speak everything into existence by faith, then sickness will retreat and prosperity will come rushing in. But if that perspective is true, if having enough faith can truly fix anything and everything, then how do we explain the persecution of the early church? Do, do those who are willing to die for Christ simply not have enough faith to save them from a martyr's death? Did the disciples fail that faith test when all of them but one were, were executed for proclaiming Jesus? And even John, the only one who wasn't executed, church tradition holds that he survived being boiled in oil before living out his days imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos. Why didn't the remarkable remarkable faith of the early church leaders fix everything for them. How do we explain the thousands of modern Christians who are brothers and sisters who die for Jesus every single year? Maybe, maybe we've misunderstood what faith really is. And our misconceptions may begin with the way our language works. Works, You see, English translations of the New Testament often use three different words to try and make sense of some of those ancient Greek complexities. Uh, faith, belief, and trust are closely related terms, but they're not synonymous. Faith is all about the presence of confidence and the absence of fear and doubt. Uh, this is uh, that's why uh, having faith has, has come to look sometimes like positive thinking. Belief focuses mainly on intellectual assent. Our everyday understanding of belief is usually measured on whether we think something is likely true, not whether or not that belief actually affects our lives. Our culture has little issue with the person believing in something and not acting like they do, but the Bible does have an issue with that. Now, trust, on the other hand, almost always assumes a corresponding action. If we trust someone, it should be evident in that relationship. If a parent tells this teenager, I trust you, but never lets him leave the house, then clearly there is no trust. Now, now while these three words are different in English, almost every time they're used in the New Testament, they are a translation of the same Greek root word. In his book, Eight Dumb Things Smart Christians Believe, author named Larry Osborne says, that means the Bible knows nothing of the sharp distinctions that we make between faith, belief, and trust. Biblically, they not only overlap, but they are practically synonymous. To the writers of scripture, our modern distinctions between faith, belief, and trust would seem quite strange and forced. Therefore, guys, biblical faith is not about what we can do. Faith is about what God has already done. Faith is about living on the foundation of what God has already accomplished and living with the assurance that God will do what he says he will do going forward. So what is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It's the conviction of things not seen. Our faith is revealed when our beliefs are evident in our trust. Faith is not about something we can create that'll fix everything in our lives, but faith is about fixing our eyes on the one who can. So I encourage you today, take a minute or two to go to that Hebrews 11 and read through the great hall of faith. Think about all God did in and through the lives of people who endured hardship and pain, but glorified God through it all because they were living by faith. And that same God who worked through Abraham and Sarah and through Moses and David and the prophets and the disciples in the early church, that same God wants to work through you to make his grace and his glory known to your neighbors and to the nations. But that can only happen if you are living by faith. So Good Life Church, may as, may as we walk into this weekend, as we look to the weeks ahead, may we be a people who not only love enough to share the good news, but share our lives as well, but to be a people who are rooted and living by faith. I love you guys. We'll see you Sunday, 9.30 and 11 at the church as we continue our gospel series. We'll be online at 11. And until then, guys, let's go be a people who live by faith.